Preparing the CPAP and choosing clinical parameters. This video will cover how to fill the humidifier and PEEP bottles and how to set clinical parameters. You must complete these steps each time you would like to use the CPAP for treatment. The first step is to fill the bottles with water. You should use distilled water. But if distilled water is not available, drinking water can be used instead. Using the distilled water, fill the humidifier bottle up to the top red line. The evaporation process will decrease the water level during CPAP therapy. It is important to refill the bottle as soon as the level nears the bottom red line. The PEEP bottle should also be filled with distilled water up to the red line. The evaporation process also affects the PEEP water level, however at much slower pace than the humidifier bottle. It is extremely important to ensure a constant water level at the red line. Any other amount of water will affect the gas pressure provided to the patient. Now you will need to set the clinical parameters based on clinical indications. These parameters are gas temperature, gas humidity, gas flow, oxygen level and gas pressure. To begin, turn on the CPAP by pressing the switch at the left bottom corner of the control box. This starts the main control panel and air compressor. You will hear a low noise created by airflow and the bubbling in the humidifier bottle. Once the patient is connected, you will see bottles in the PEEP bottle as well. The first step is to set the gas temperature, which can be set from 35 to 39 degrees Celsius. An alarm will sound if the actual temperature drops or increases by one degree below or above the set point. An alarm indicating low gas temperature will also sound when you turn on the device. This is because the CPAP machine takes about 10 minutes to reach the desired gas temperature. The alarm can be muted for 10 minutes by pressing the orange mute button. Next, adjust the gas humidity by using the lower knob on the right hand side of the control box. It should be set at the maximum level 100% unless significant condensation can be observed in the patient circuit. It takes approximately 20 minutes to reach 90% relative humidity, which is the minimum recommended humidity level. This timing may vary depending on weather conditions. If excessive condensation is observed, the humidity level should be decreased accordingly by adjusting the knob on the control box. Now you will need to adjust the required total flow and oxygen levels. These levels are set at the same time by adjusting values on the blender. After determining the required oxygen and flow levels for your patient, use the table to determine what combination of air and oxygen values should be applied to achieve the appropriate gas mix at the appropriate flow. For example, if we want to provide 47% oxygen at 6 liters per minute flow, we should set the air value at 4 liters per minute and the oxygen value at 2 liters per minute. If you decide to increase the dose of oxygen to 61% and maintain the same flow of 6 liters per minute, you should set the air to 3 liters per minute and the oxygen to 3 liters per minute. Now it's time to set the pressure. The pressure delivered to the patient can be set by moving the column inside the PEEP bottle up and down the scale marked on the side of the bottle. In this example, we're setting it at 5 centimeters of water pressure by positioning the end of the column at the 5 centimeter mark on the bottle. Once you've reached the desired pressure level, lock the column in place by tightening the plastic fastener and ensure that it is secure. 
It's extremely important to make sure that the water level always stays at the red line on the bottle. If it moves below or above the line, the scale will be inaccurate. Once all the parameters are set, the patient can be connected to the CPAP machine. Remember that it takes up to 20 minutes for the CPAP to reach all set points. During this time, the patient will not receive gas with the desired humidity and temperature. Therefore, if the situation allows, it is recommended to start the CPAP machine 20 minutes prior to connecting the patient. When you are ready to connect the patient, select the appropriate cannula. There are several cannula options on the market. We will demonstrate use of two options the cannula recommended by the manufacturer and the option that is most widely available. The dual nasal cannula is the easiest interface to use and an inexpensive solution recommended by the manufacturer. It comes in three sizes. To use, select the appropriate size for your patient and simply insert the nasal prongs into the patient's nostrils. Then connect the other side to the patient circuit, like this. If you do not have access to cannula specifically designed for CPAP, you can use an ET tube instead. This type of single nasal interface is widely available and inexpensive. There are drawbacks to this solution, including possible trauma to the patient and the need for a high level of skill to insert the cannula. To use this option, determine the appropriate length to cut the ET tube by measuring from the patient's ear to the patient's nose. Cut the ET tube accordingly. Then, insert the ET tube and connect to the patient circuit. Once the patient is connected, Make sure that the patient is positioned higher than the humidifier bottle to prevent the risk of water entering the patient's respiratory system in case of excessive condensation. In this case, any excess water would just drip back to the humidifier bottle. You can adjust the height of the main unit by loosening and tightening the black knob at the back of the unit. The CPAP unit requires basic maintenance. Following a few simple steps will ensure that the CPAP device stays in good condition for several years. In addition to cleaning the main unit on a regular basis, you will need to conduct routine preventative maintenance on some of its components. Once a month, the air filter should be checked and cleaned. You can do this by removing the back panel of the air compressor, taking out the air filter, and washing it with soap and water. Once the air filter is completely dry, you can place it back into the air compressor. Once every three months, each flow meter should be opened and cleaned. To do so, unscrew the plastic covers and remove. Remove the cap from the scale and take out the metal ball. Clean each of the elements with alcohol and reassemble. Some of the components must be replaced after extended use. The heater wire should be replaced every one and a half years. The silicone patient tubes can discolor over a period of time, which can affect your ability to see condensation. 
These tubes should be replaced every 12 months. The bottles don't need replacing unless the markings become difficult to read. There are a couple of features on the device that you may need to use for monitoring or diagnostic purposes. It is possible to read the total number of hours the machine has been in operation throughout its lifetime. This information is displayed for the first three seconds after turning on the device. Additionally, there are red diagnostic buttons at the back of the control box that activate technical information used by the manufacturer. You will not need to use these buttons unless you request servicing and are asked by the service provider to provide additional information. If you are requested to do so, you will receive additional instructions at that time.